viewers, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Give thanks to God for grace, giving you and I to be part of this devotional program called The Daily Fountain. It's a program of Anglican Cable Network Nigeria, brought to you by the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. I want to encourage you to join us every day and be part of this program, The Daily Fountain. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for grace. Rise up this morning and to be part of this program. We ask the Lord, by reason of the word and prayers, let there be a total change and transformation in our life. Heal somebody, Lord, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The topic today is... Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. And our test is taken from Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 26. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 to 26. Let's look at the scriptures together. Please make sure you have your Bible. Please open your Bible to Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. This I say then, Walk in the spirit, and it shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led by the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, is joy, is peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with their affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be the heroes of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. This is the word of the Lord. We've just read from the letter of Paul to the Galatians, chapter 5, verse 16. Let's, let's, let's listen. Just listen carefully as I read through the comment for the day from the Daily Fountain. Walk in the Spirit. Paul labored among the Galatians, teaching them the gospel of salvation by grace alone. Unfortunately, other teachers came after him to teach that they needed faith in Christ plus their own human effort. This upset Paul so greatly that he denounced these teachers of what he called another gospel in the strongest possible terms, saying they should be a cost. He pointed out to the Christians that no one can be justified by works. Because if that is possible, Christ died in vain. He went on to show them the problems they were having. Lives and in their fellowship was because 
rather than rely on the part of the spirit who alone can help them live godly lives that please God, they walked in the flesh. The good news is that things need not be that way. If we recognize our inability to live the life of the spirit in our own strength and the demands to walk in the spirit will bear the fruit of the spirit which is anchored in love. Where do you draw your strength to live your spiritual life? I think that lies a question today. Where do you draw spiritual strength to live your spiritual life? Day after day, people of God, we live as Christians, and probably some persons that are watching me now who are not Christians, but for those of us that are Christians, where lies your strength? The passage we just read, Paul wrote to the Galatian church, and he said to them that they should not listen to those who teach them another gospel. And what is that gospel he's talking about? He's talking about those who teach them that they can run their Christian race on their own, by their own power, through their own work, even without strength from above. That is a difficult thing to do. But if you are listening to me now, I want to say to you, brethren, that the first is for you to totally surrender your life to Christ. Anything outside Christ is crisis and you're not saved. Now, in the passage that we read, Paul wrote to the church in Galatians, and he clearly showed them the difference between the works of the flesh and the works of the spirit uh, and the fruits of the spirit. It is good that we look closely at the works of the flesh. And after that, we shall look at the fruit of the spirit. The works of the flesh, as listed here by Paul to the church in Galatians and to us today, Number one is adultery. Number two talks about fornication and so on, uncleanness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness. Some of these things are still found in the life of people who call themselves. Christians, are you being led by the works of the flesh? Are you being led by the things of this world? Know today that you cannot run this race of your own power. That is the message for today. Remember the topic is walk in the spirit. It is not by power. It is not by might, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. What is driving you today? Is it your flesh? And the best question to ask you actually is, have you totally surrendered your life to Christ? It is possible for you to be in the church, and day after day you still exhibit the works of the flesh. You envy you murder, you commit adultery, fornication, drunkenness, party spirit sedition. You participate in some of these things, but yet in the church. And then the question you should be asking, how am I going to come out from all this? As far as you allow the world to consume you, you have no place in God's kingdom. Anybody who allows the war to rule his life and the works of the flesh to reign in his life. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 and 22, Even though you say to me, I have been in the church for five years, for ten years, I have done this and I have done that, I have acquired this title or that title in the church, 
as far as you are still being led by the flesh, he will say to you, I do not know you. It will be a painful thing that you live on the planet Earth and one day you die. And the Bible said immediately after that is judgment. And you end up not making heaven. And so today, as you step out into the day, as you carry on your business of the day, you are being asked and encouraged to ensure, one, that you have totally surrendered your life to Christ. That is one. Having done that, look upon Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith to help you. And that is recognizing and surrendering your will and your life to be led by the Spirit of God. Jesus said, I'm going away, and when I go, the Comforter shall come. And he added and said, he will teach you all things. He will be a counselor, he will be a guidance, he will be a teacher. He will direct, he will lead. Are you being led by the Spirit? Desire today for an infilling of the Holy Spirit and believe God to direct your ways today and ever. And you will be a brand new person here on earth and even after. Look at, very quickly, listen to me. As I mentioned, from St. Paul's writing to the church in Galatians, the fruits of the Spirit. Very, very important. Paul listed them as love. When you are led by the Spirit of God, then the love of God comes in, takes over you, and you exhibit it. Number two is joy. Not just mere being happy, but a joy that comes from your inner man. Wherever you are, filled with the joy of the Lord, the fullness of the joy of the Lord. Do you have love? Are you filled with the joy of the Lord? You can be today if you will decide to totally surrender your life to Christ. Next is peace. And we're talking about the peace of God that passes all human understanding. My prayer is that this peace will come into your life, come into your family today and reign in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We have long suffering, we have gentleness. We have long suffering, we have gentleness. And then again, we have goodness, which also comes from God, not from man. And so you see the Spirit bringing us the goodness that comes from God, that radiates from God, and that's what we show forth. And then faith, and then meekness, and then temperance. And he said, against this thing there is no law. The Spirit that gives and directs and lead. Once again, I ask you, just like we have in our reading today, where do you draw your strength to live your spiritual life? Is it from the flesh or from the Spirit? I present you with this two today. Are you ready to say, Jesus, send forth your Spirit upon my life. I cannot go this journey alone. Are you ready to open your hand and say, God, fill me with the Spirit. Lead and direct my ways. From today, I will surrender to your will by your Spirit. Are you going to say the same thing with me today? And the Spirit of God will come forth and lead you. Those things you're battling within your life, you cannot overcome them alone. But by the Spirit of God, you overcome them all and be prepared as a candidate of God's kingdom. My prayer is that you watching this program now will make a decision to surrender your life to Christ and allow him to rule and to reign in your life day after day. And the joy of salvation will fill your hearts 
from time to time, from age to age, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before we say this prayer here together, I don't know if there's somebody you have watched this program, I want to surrender your life to Christ. I want to really, truly rededicate your life to Christ, to say, Christ, come into my life. Come reign, send forth your spirit upon my life. We can pray together. And then we also join in the prayers here. And so please, you want to say, Jesus, I need you in my life. The journey today, I cannot go it alone. Just lift up your right hand, place it upon your chest, right there where you are, watch it now, and say these words after me. Heavenly Father, I come before you. Have mercy. Forgive me my sins. Oh, Lord, I pray. Recreate in me a new heart. Send forth your Holy Spirit to live in me, to direct me all the days of my life. Oh, God, let me daily live in the Spirit and manifest the fruits of the Spirit in my life every day. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are a brand new person. The Spirit of God is reigning in your life. And the joy of the Lord will fill your heart. God bless you. Say these prayers alongside with me one more. Heavenly Father, help me to rely on the power of your Spirit. That my life may be evidence and your life reign in me through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May your life truly show forth Christ in you to the glory of his name. Amen and amen. I encourage you to join us again same time tomorrow and be part of this program. You can partner with us. Pray alongside with us in this program and God will continue to bless you day after day. You can be also be past sponsorship of this program. God bless you as you decide to do so. Thank you for watching. Join us again tomorrow. Amen and amen.